Hello and welcome to Byju's IAS. Presenting to you the daily quiz for 19th of September 2021. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. Which of the following is or are the components of National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture? Number one, rainfed area development. Number two, submission on agroforestry. Number three, national bamboo mission. Number four, soil health management. Number five, Green India Mission. What is the context? This article in the PIB has a reference to the National Mission on Sustainable Agriculture, and hence we've taken this question. The government of India has announced a slew of measures to tackle climate change, and as a part of these measures, National Action Plan on Climate Change, that is NAPCC, was launched in the year 2008. So there are various missions under this NAPCC or National Action Plan for Climate Change and the National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture is one such mission. Now, this National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture was launched to bring about a change in the agricultural practices so that it can facilitate the mitigation of ill effects of climate change, right? So what are the components under NMSA? There are five different components under this mission. and they are promoting location and crop specific sustainable soil health management through this component the next component is rainfed area development that is for development and conservation of natural resources along with farming systems the other three components are submission on agroforestry national bamboo mission and the climate change and sustainable agriculture monitoring modeling and networking component coming back to our question Yes, rainfed area development is a component under this mission. Submission on agroforestry also is a component. So is national bamboo mission and soil health management. However, Green India Mission is not a component of National Mission for Sustainable Agriculture. It is one of those missions under the National Action Plan for Climate Change. So now we've discussed two different missions under this National Action Plan for Climate Change. The task for you for today is to let us know which are all the missions under the National Action Plan on Climate Change. Type your answers in the comment section below. So the right answer to our question here would be 1 2 3 and 4 only which is option C. Moving on to question number 2. Which of the given statements with respect to Lala Lajpat Rai is or are incorrect? Number 1 He founded the Indian Home Rule League of America in New York City. He established the Dayanand Anglo-Vedic School in Lahore. He authored the book Young India. Choose the correct option. Why have we taken this question? This PIB article here talks about the 100th birth anniversary of a Tamil writer, Indian independence activist and a social reformer Subramanya Bharati, who is also popularly known as Mahakavi Bharati. and this social reformer that is mahakavi bharati fought for the emancipation of women he protested against child marriage and also stood for reforming brahmanism and religion and in this pib article there is a mention of lala lajpat rai on whom mahakavi bharati wrote two poems that is lajpat rai tudi and lajpat rai pralabham and these poems were written by him when lajpat rai was exiled to burma in the year 1907 and hence we've taken this question here statement number 1 becomes correct because lala lajpat rai founded the indian home rule league of america in 1917 he was also a follower of dayanand saraswati who was the founder of arya samaj and he also went on to become one of the society's leaders and the dayanand anglo vedic school in lahore was established by him so statement number 2 also becomes correct coming to statement number 3 this statement is absolutely correct but there is a scope of getting confused with this statement here please remember that while the weekly journal young india was published by mahatma gandhi lala lajpat rai is the author of the book young india It is in this book that he describes the political situation of India as it was in 1915 and also the history of India's freedom struggle before 1915. So the right answer to our question here would be option D none of the above because the question is asking us for the incorrect statements. Now let us take up question number 3. Make make Eris and how may are seen in news are option A supermassive black holes option B dwarf planets Option C asteroids option D lunar craters why have we taken this question 
This article in the Indian Express newspaper today talks about Planet 9 in our solar system on which studies are still being carried out. It is estimated that this Planet 9 could have a mass of about 10 times that of Earth. And this very article has a mention of five dwarf planets in our solar system. In the year 2006, Pluto, which was considered the ninth planet in the solar system, was reclassified as a dwarf planet. This reclassification happened because of the fact that Pluto resided within a zone of other similarly sized objects. And currently, there are five dwarf planets as Pluto is also called. They are Ceres, Pluto, Eris, Makemake and Haumea. So the right answer to our question here would be option B, dwarf planets. Moving on to question number 4. Which of the given statements with respect to Potion Abhyan is or are incorrect? Number 1. Ministry of Women and Child Development is the implementing agency. Number 2. Vice Chairperson of Niti Aayog is the chairperson of the National Council on Nutrition set up under the Potion Abhyan. Number 3. The goal of the mission are to achieve improvement in nutritional status of children under the age of 14 years, pregnant women and lactating mothers. What is the context? This article in the PIB today has a reference to Poshan Abhyan. What is this Poshan Abhyan? Poshan Abhyan is also known as National Nutrition Mission and it stands for Prime Minister's Overarching Scheme for Holistic Nutrition. This Poshan Abhyan is the world's largest nutrition program for children and mothers. So what is the aim of Poshan Abhyan? The aim of Poshan Abhyan is to remove malnutrition from the country by the year 2022. And in this direction, this Abhyan aims to reduce stunting and wasting among children by 2% a year, that is 6% by 2022, and anemia among children, adolescent girls and pregnant women and lactating mothers by 3% a year, which is a total of 9% by 2022. Now let us go back to the question. Statement number one here is correct. Ministry of Women and Child Development implements Poshan Abhyan. Please remember that Niti Aayog also plays a significant role in this mission and the National Council on India's Nutritional Challenges was set up under this mission to offer policy directions and review the programs. And this National Council on India's Nutritional Challenges is also called as National Council on Nutrition. And this National Council on Nutrition is chaired by the Vice Chairman of Niti Aayog. So statement number two is also correct. The goals of Poshan Abhyan are to achieve improvement in the nutritional status of children in the age group of 0 to 6 years of age, adolescent girls, pregnant women and lactating mothers. So statement number 3 becomes incorrect. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option C3 only since the question is asking us for incorrect statements. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2020. With reference to India's Desert National Park, which of the following statements are correct? Number 1. It is spread over two districts. Number 2. There is no human habitation inside the park. Number 3. It is one of the natural habitats of the Great Indian Bustard. Select the correct answer using the code given below. The Desert National Park is spread in two districts of Rajasthan, that is Jaisalmer and Barmer districts. So statement number 1 becomes absolutely correct, which directly eliminates option B here. Normally, human activities are not allowed in National Park, but many villagers lived inside the Desert National Park, so statement number 2 becomes incorrect. Also, the Desert National Park is a natural habitat of the Great Indian Bustard, so statement number 3 becomes correct. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option C, 1 and 3 only. The fact of the day for today is bad banks. There is this article on bad banks in the FAQ section of the Hindu newspaper today. What is the context? The government has set up two new entities to acquire stressed assets from banks and then sell them in the market. The union government has approved a 30,600 crore facility for guaranteeing securities to be issued by the National Asset Reconstruction Company Limited, which is NARCL, which is a bad bank. Before we delve deep into this topic, let us understand what a bad bank is. A bad bank is a bank that buys bad loans, non-performing assets, illiquid holdings, 
and stressed assets of other lenders and financial institutions to help them clear their balance sheets. What it then does is it resolves these bad assets or loans over a period of time by selling them in the market. Here you may ask what is a bad loan? Bad loans are the loans that have been borrowed from the bank but have not been repaid or are not likely to be repaid. So how will these bad banks help the banks? Number one, these bad banks can take off the NPA burden from the banks. And when these banks are freed of the NPA burden, they can take a more positive look at the new loans or in growing its business. It does not have to worry about the bad loans. And number two, when the balance sheet of a bank is cleaner, that is when the balance sheet is with lesser or no non-performing assets at all or no bad loans at all, it will make it relatively easier for the lender to raise fresh capital if required. So now let us understand what is happening in the present context. In the present context, National Asset Reconstructions Company Limited, which is NARCL, and India Debt Resolution Company Limited, which is IDRCL, both together will act as a bad bank. NARCL has already been incorporated under the Companies Act, and it has been set up with a goal to acquire stressed assets worth about rupees two lakh crore from various different commercial banks in different phases, and then. IDRCL will try to sell these stressed assets in the market. And to make this bad bank work, the government has approved Rs 30,600 crore which can be used as guarantee. Let me explain how this works. NARCL would make a 15% cash payment to the banks based on a valuation of the bad loan and the rest would be given to it as security receipts. And these receipts in turn would be guaranteed by the government's 30,600 crore backstop facility. So here the government is providing a guarantee. But the critics of this bad bank concept argue that since government is providing a guarantee, it is guaranteeing some part of the NPAs, this could lead to laxity on the part of bankers. And the bankers might not assess the risks properly and thereby it might create more and more bad loans. However, the government of India expects that the setting up of these twin entities as bad banks that is NARCL and IDRCL plus the guarantee that is being provided by the government will make way for quicker action on resolving stressed assets and this will help the banks in getting a better value realization. Why? Because the bad bank will help the bank get rid of all its toxic assets, all its bad loans, all its stressed assets which were eating up its profits in one quick move. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.